hit on a couple of things. You hit on heavy metals, which I love to explore more, and you hit on blood sugar imbalances. Now, I, I gathered from what you said is low blood sugar, maybe hypoglycemia. Right. No, a lot of what we're labeling ADHD is clearly low blood sugar. Mm -hmm. One of my most memorable memories from medical school, not quite knowing what was going on, a 72-year-old woman came in. She was diabetic, had her, both her legs amputated, took four people to hold her down. She was cursing and screaming. You can imagine the scene. It was really quite. So I, I had no idea what was happening, and the resident said, give her glucose. Within 40 seconds, she went from a hostile, angry, threatening person to the sweetest grandmother you can imagine. And her blood sugar turned out to be 40. So she had given herself too much insulin, lowered the blood sugar. So I saw right there dramatically, the brain cannot function. Gotcha. It took me a while to understand and, you know, but yeah, with your brain in the short term, when you run on glucose. Yeah. So what we see, of course, happening with so many kids is roller coaster. Mm. Blood sugar is uh, that's a real problem. Huh. And it's not like getting better, but change is happening. The tax on sugars, a uh, great book I always recommend the patients called Salt, Sugar, Fat by Michael Moss, who's a New York Times publisher prize winner. Mm. He spent five years researching the food industry and Craft Foods has 300 people working around the clock to get you to eat more. If, you, if a potato is crunched at 3.5 pounds of crunch pressure, you know, the crunch we all love, yeah. and then dissolves the brain, we'll say eat more. Wow. And that fat sugar ratio, about 4.5 to 1, which is the same as mother's milk. Ah. They actually call it the bliss point in the industry. So they're designing the food and that whole thing. So the kids are now subjected to this. Jeez. Um, but there's more awareness. Um, mm -hmm. We've had two seminars here, Food is Healing. Mm -hmm. In Milwaukee, and we had uh, 350 people the first year, 450. Uh, so I think the interest is there, and people understand food is pretty basic. Mm -hmm. But starting with diet uh, is where I like to begin with anyone I see. Yeah. Now, let's hit on this. So explore a little bit so people understand the mechanism here, because a lot of adults know that they're, you know, people are insulin resistant or type 2 diabetic. There's, you know, 20% of the adult population is pre-diabetic. So... And the teenager today has a one three chance of being diabetic by the time they're 40 years old. Right. Okay, good. Sorry. Huge. No, no, that's, that's really good info. So when we see these children now with low blood sugar, they may have insulin resistance, but they don't have diabetes yet. So is it this reactive hyperglycemia? Do you want to dive into what causes this low blood sugar and then these ADHD-like symptoms to come out? Sure. Well, the, the basic thing, as I was saying before, is in the short term, your brain uses glucose for fuel. So if that glucose is low, most likely from an overconsumption of sugar, because in a natural environment, free sugar is very hard to find. If you think about it, there's honey and maple syrup. Yeah. That's it. Um, fruits, of course, have varying sweetness, but our physiology, I think, was never designed, when we talk about normal physiology, to get these blasts of sugar. Um, the calculations, I think a kid might have four or five grams of glucose in their bloodstream. So you, if you pour in a drink that has like eight, nine, 10, 11 teaspoons of sugar in it, mm -hmm. typical size soda, uh, that huge rush of glucose is going to disrupt the system. Mm -hmm. And the pancreas responds by putting out insulin. But since it's not designed to handle that load, it over, usually overproduces insulin, mm -hmm. which then lowers the blood sugar, that roller coaster, we call it. Mm -hmm. So that gets the kids very irritable when the blood sugar drops, we say below 70, 80. Now the body is designed very well to compensate for that because once your adrenal glands are monitoring blood glucose, if that drops more than 2%, your glucose level, it's in there squirting out adrenaline, mm. which then takes apart your body literally to make more glucose. And you can see that a lot of kids are pretty wired, with large pupils, and what we're calling hyperactivity is probably just overdriving the sympathetic nervous system. Mm. So. Wow. Was that? That's awesome. Yeah. Closed. So medically, we call that reactive hypoglycemia. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The over overcompensation, and then that will vary based on genetics and individuals. So, yeah. um, but how you deal with this addiction question? So I'm sure you deal with too in your work. Um, I really urge the families, if possible, to do a start with elimination diet. We see better results that way. Mm -hmm. And then um, when working with parents, I'll give. Kids are over seven or eight years old. I will talk to them directly and say, here's my phone number. Mm. Don't complain to mom or dad. This is my idea. If you don't like to die, call me. And I do get calls. Uh, last month, a nine-year-old boy was calling saying, I want a glass of milk. Mm. 
So I said, okay, uh, tell me, have you noticed a change in the diet? And he said, I'm not fighting with my mom as much. So you want to try and engage the kids. It's a challenge. The family um, it's easier now, as we know, there's just more uh, gluten-free and uh, grains, and I think more consciousness out there. Yeah. So that's really great. So you really put the onus on the child and get them to realize for themselves how the diet is improving their own life. And I love how you possible, make yeah. yourself available and vulnerable. You know, for people that call you, you know. Mm-hmm.